Welcome. My name is Gary Buchanan, and I'm the Professional Services Manager for BoxCast. If you're not familiar with BoxCast, we are a live streaming platform that offers live streaming to multiple destinations and is easy to use. In addition to working for BoxCast, I'm also a pastor, serving for over 12 years in active ministry with my wife and daughter. Primarily, I've worked in the media ministry and youth ministry fields, and my passion for media, tech, and pretty much anything nerdy is, well, enormous. Today, I want to discuss with you a topic that is really close to my heart, volunteers. I love working with individuals that have a passion for ministry and are excited about media and how it is used in the church. This presentation today is going to be focusing on training those volunteers for lifelong service in the kingdom, and I'll share some tips on how to approach training as well as some insight about volunteering philosophies that I've picked up along the way. So let's get started. The idea of using conceptual knowledge, skills knowledge, and having a desired passion is to prepare volunteers for operating in ministry. Conceptual knowledge is the basic understanding of ideas and concepts that relate to how or why something is done. Generally, it incorporates a basic grasp of some terms, you know, that jargon we use to explain something, so we sound cooler or maybe even more technical. But in practice, as a standard, in most industries centered around media ministry, a basic understanding of terms is more for aligning members to understand what functions are, what pieces to a tool do, and for troubleshooting. With every role your volunteers will take on, it's important to develop specific skills and how-to knowledge. This really, in practice, is the hardest part about training. It's teaching the practical skill of the tool or concept involved with that particular role your volunteer will be in. And as a good rule of thumb, I start our volunteers out on the easiest role, usually presentation software like ProPresenter. Here, it requires the least starting knowledge. And if they can use a computer, then they can run presentation software fairly easily. From there, we build on how that tool works, functions, and what features we use, eventually moving into the roles, tools, and concepts that require a little more grasping and doing, like audio reinforcement or live streaming. This does two things. One, it helps to build confidence in your volunteer, and two, it's a gateway into a growing desire to learn and do more. So this brings me to our third part of our education, desire and passion. With a discernible and clear desire to be serving in the role or capacity that you have a need for, the process of training can become daunting and loose. This desire, notably in our volunteers, is reflected in having an interest in what they will be doing, being punctual with attendance on days that they're scheduled, and having a willingness to learn. That will manifest itself in being curious and adventurous, oftentimes creative, with the role and tool that they are using. This desire will mean that they will have a willingness to learn from their mistakes, which should be encouraged. Failing and faltering is common and can be the best teacher. Obviously, each service or event, you'll want it to go well, with as few errors or mistakes as possible. But having the freedom to mess up and being encouraged that it's okay when it does happen can help to develop a sincere desire and passion for wanting to continue. My favorite part of training volunteers is when you can step aside and witness them using the knowledge they've learned to run and use tools for the role that they'll be in. It's a good feeling to know that you've prepared them enough for where and what they'll be doing. And if you're going for that extra cup of coffee that morning, you're confident that the process can continue without minimal issues. This comes from using the tools. Sometimes operating a tool requires more learning than the tool itself. But in most cases, learning the tool can only come from using the tool. And we called this baptism by fire. But now it's known as self-education. Most tools are becoming more user-friendly. Gone really are most of the days where a tool required custom training to use it. And if you ran into issues, which you were bound to do so, would require you to reread the manual or search for a phone number or look for some resources for help. Most tools and resources have training videos, tutorials, custom onboardings that help with this process but using the tool is where most of the benefits are offered in learning that tool. Operation, and no, I don't mean the board game, for the first time can be intimidating. I remember the first time I started using a video switcher. It was a daunting task to figure out the terms and jargon, specific features and functions, and what to do when it all went wrong. But through time, as I learned through using the equipment, 
I was able to gain insight into how and why that sweatshirt did what it did. Did FTB or Fade to Black confuse anyone else? No? Okay. With learning and using anything comes a bit of patience. This is also important to having your volunteers operate a tool, especially when something goes wrong or stops working or becomes broken. Being prepared for that inevitable scenario can be the difference in recovering quickly or your volunteer crying in panic. The same happens with becoming bored with the tool. So let's face it, some tools are really just too simple. But variety in the roles your volunteers will be in, the mixture of tools and collaboration required can help keep your volunteer engaged. I would say that the keys or glue to using a tool is actually intuition. There are so many tools on the market that accomplish the same task in different ways. From live streaming, to lyric presentation, to lighting. There are so many tools that all have, in many ways, the same functions. Intuition, by definition, is to understand something without the need for conscious reasoning. This is a skill that becomes greater over time. Your volunteers will develop this skill that I think is the key or glue to your success in training them. As your team learns best practices, identifies common precursors to issues, and becomes familiar with the process, they will develop intuition by serving in the various roles in ministry. Intuition is only gained through good progress and education and using the tools side by side. As a leader, you gain intuition on who uses those tools best and where others can benefit from more learning opportunities. This is a rounded approach to lead us into our third aspect of training volunteers, development. I was told when I was younger that there are always two facts to doing anything. One, work smarter and not harder, and two, use a proper tool for the job. I was also told never to eat yellow snow, which also is a strong recommendation, but back to the topic at hand. Development is really nothing more than implementing the right tools, the right processes, and people in the right places. I know that many of us aren't operating on budgets of thousands and thousands of dollars, and if you are, what a blessing. Many of us are working on budgets of hundreds, or get it when we need it. With that being said, I've always approached development of our media ministry with some heavy guidelines. A, have a game plan for improvement. You don't need to always upgrade your equipment or purchase a new shiny something to enhance your ministry. Although it is way awesome, like Christmas morning, to open that package of new camera equipment, but thoughtful planning for improvements always starts with improving quality, consistency, and ease. Try to plan around items or challenges that give the most value points for whatever is required to implement that change. There is always benefit to small victories, while large ones are always being worked on. I like to focus on one large investment or upgrade and two small investments or upgrades a year. An example would be deciding to add lower thirds to our live stream using a video switcher in ProPresenter. The investment is being a video switcher that can handle the need and possibly upgrading ProPresenter. Small improvements would include teaching on the new equipment and process, learning new ways of creating that look and feel, while learning the features and function of the new equipment will also help to enhance the look and feel of the stream, but also will provide practical knowledge on how to produce a live stream with lower third graphics. This literally fulfills the need to improve the ministry offerings and helps to engage my volunteers on production. Just remember that planning and executing improvements doesn't always mean you need to invest a lot of time or money. There will be temptation to buy and implement a whole bunch of everything all at once. Approaching with a plan can actually help in reducing friction with your volunteers and make the process a whole lot better. B, invest in smart upgrades or tools that make production easier without compromising quality or you having to scrape for help. Remember what I said earlier about the two facts to doing something? This is where working smarter and not harder actually comes in. Automation of some tools is a good example of this. It is a nice improvement that is fairly inexpensive with a low learning curve to implement. Many of the most popular tools across the spectrum for media ministry do have integrations or functions that work with some sort of automation or setup process. A nice example of automation would be automating your lighting using ProPresenter and LightKey. Many triggers can change lighting cues based on song playlists, or using a template to help mix your worship for live streaming using Ableton or Logic Pro. Each example offers you and your team a little more flexibility with presenting a well-planned service or event, 
but also reduces the need for working harder versus smarter. Media Ministry incorporates a lot of pieces that you and your team will have to be ready to deploy at the right moment. Why not make smart upgrades to tools and processes that elevate your production and your team rather than make it hard to do ministry at all? Sometimes this even means implementing new team members. It's all part of the game. C. People are the greatest tool you'll ever have. Invest in them first. I think we can all agree that without our incredible volunteers and help, our media ministries would be lacking. I've always held the belief that media ministry, or any ministry for that matter, isn't about me. It's always about people. Connecting, healing, and engaging with people. Your greatest tool besides God is your people. Investing in them first is paramount. Because without them, you're doing it by yourself. This means taking care to schedule them appropriately, taking interest in their lives, recognizing fatigue and burnout, and being willing to put them in and take them out when the need arises. But most importantly, your focus as a team is on the audience of one. Doing media ministry for the right reasons, with the right mindset and the right heart is the greatest investment you can make in your team. Pour out on them first, so they are prepared to pour out on others. I like to make our volunteers aware that when they join the media ministry team, they have three things to look forward to. Challenges, victories, and failures. Challenges are plenty and rewarded with victories for the kingdom, and our failures teach us how to overcome our challenges better. So in closing, it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor to present today. I'd like to thank those involved in media ministry, and I applaud you and all the work you and your teams are doing for the kingdom. I'd also like to thank PTZ Optics, the amazing people here at Worship Summit Conference, and of course, BoxCast, who have given me this amazing opportunity to present to you. I'd like to thank my family and ministry partners for helping to provide insight on this topic, and of course, I'd like to thank Jesus, for without Him, we wouldn't have a purpose for doing what we do. So thank you for joining me, and blessings.